Taking a look at your top stories, one person has died and a child and a man have been taken to the hospital after being shot last night. Richmond County deputies say it happened on East Taylor Street. That's just a little over a half mile from where the mass shooting on Sandbar Ferry Road happened about 10 days ago. The man is in critical condition and we're still working to learn more on how the child is doing and if there are, is any information on suspects. A former Richmond County deputy is pleading guilty for the killing of his girlfriend back in June of 2020. District Attorney Jared Williams says Jason Cunningham has been sentenced to life in prison for the death of Nicole Harrington. Cunningham also faces five years in confinement for possession of a firearm. Today, South Carolina senators will take up a House pass version of the Senate's six week abortion ban. Last week, the House passed it after a more than 23 hour debate. Senators will decide if they accept the changes the House made and send the bill to the governor or reject it and work on a compromise with the House. The bill would include exceptions for life of the mother, rape and fatal fetal anomalies. Currently, abortion is legal in a state before about 20 weeks into a pregnancy. A Richmond County Sheriff's Office lieutenant is officially announcing his campaign for Aiken County Sheriff. Lucas Grant looks to face off against current Aiken Public Safety Officer Marty Sawyer. Grant will make his candidacy official tonight at 6 o'clock at the Smith Hazel Recreation Center on Kershaw Street. It comes months after current Sheriff Michael Hunt announced his retirement and endorsed Sawyer in the race. Tonight, South Carolina DOT is meeting to discuss bridge repair projects for Aiken County. Some of those projects include US 278 over Southern Railroad and over Horse Creek, and then another one on SC 421 over Southern Railroad. This will be at Langley Bath Clearwater Middle School in Warrenville from 5 to 7. The Aiken County Homeless Housing Group is asking the city to modify the zoning ordinance to add tiny homes for homeless people. Their president, George Clare, wants to add 25 homes to the two acres of land there. The plan would include a fenced community, meeting room, laundry, picnic tables, and more. Clare says he will use his money he raises to pay for the homes. This plan also would come with some rules from job help to money management training to help get people on their feet.